Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Ryan Kennard and I'm here. Um, hi, my name is Ryan Kennard. I work with the Upper Assiniboine River Conservation District and I want to talk to you today about the benefits of shelter belts. As an agroforestry practice, to me, shelter belts really show the, the, the synergies and the, and the little benefits that are derived from increasing the diversity on the landscape in, in an agricultural setting. So, mostly it's based on the premise of, in, of impacting air and water resources. Um, the diagram kind of just is a very uh, rudimentary image to try to show you how most shelter belts impact the wind uh, on a local area or local uh, site. So I'll go into some of the air and wind benefits from shelter belts. Obviously dust and soil erosion are the control of um, odor as well as chemical drift off sites. Uh, shelter belts can do a real good job of holding some of that on the site. And it, and it also impacts the air temperature in that microclimate around the, the shelter belt. Moving into soil, um, some of the benefits from a shelter belt that uh, are seen can be an increased organic content within the soil adjacent to the shelter belt and that's just from a tree either shedding some leaf material or or in um, you know carbonish uh, root based system stuff all being shed into the soil um, again temperature uh, due to mostly to shading and the physical presence of the tree it can impact in a beneficial way the temperature of the soil I mentioned erosion already um, the organic material that's on the surface of the soil sometimes is the most vulnerable to wind erosion, so by keeping the, that in place, that's a big benefit to, to agricultural production. But, but the soil can also be improved through um, the root systems infiltrating and making the soil more porous and, and permeable to accept more uh, surface water and, and um, prevent some droughting, droughting characteristics of soils. Uh, and, and in a more of a general sense, just some of the soil structure and the biological diversity that can be found within the association of tree roots and the neighboring um, field is a big benefit to soil. Moving into water, uh, trees just through their use of water can act as a filter and purify water, but in general shelter belts can slow again the hydrological cycle, whether that be even as um, subtle as a heavy frost. There, there's moisture there that is kind of bound up on the tree, it's physic on, physically on the tree, and that, that slowly um, just changes the hydrological cycle of water on, on the site. As well as obviously the big snowpacks that probably everybody has seen at one time or another uh, as a result of again influencing the wind speeds and depositing snow on the leeward side of the shelter mill. Lastly, um, plant and animal benefits. Obviously planting trees provides a, a new source of uh, habitat and food for, for all kinds of plants and, and animals, insects and, and the like. Um, in general, it just increases the diversity of, of a site and it allows for more organisms to influence and act within that site. Um, and then some of the benefits that are derived from that are, you know, reduced pest outbreaks. And, and generally, any kind of um, negative impacts from the monocultures that we produce on the, or are planting on the fields. So these shelter belts can increase um, different kinds of organisms that can, can work against the negative outcomes of, of a monoculture environment. So those are a lot of the kind of uh, n uh, not direct or indirect economic benefits that are received from shelter belts and I'll maybe just speak real quickly about some of the direct benefits that have made shelter belts so popular across the prairies and, and that is often the, the benefit that we receive from shading or cooling, um, sheltering our buildings. and, and uh, they're still used very much for that today, and less so for, for more of the agronomic benefits that I've tried to explain here. And we hope to change that with some awareness of, with this program. So thank you for listening, and if you have any other questions, please feel free to contact uh, Upper Assiniboine River Conservation District.